No. I'll start it. We are uh, Dan and Mike. Ah, fucked it up. Wrong way around, mate. Wrong way around. Unfortunately. Just used to saying it. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. Just do whatever. Just subscribe. People always say that at the start, don't they? But I'm yeah. like, you're not really giving anyone any value really there, but never mind. It's just, we're going to do a video here on how we created our funnel. Yeah, there you go. So if you want to learn that and more videos like that in the future, make sure you hit subscribe. There you go. That's what to, they say, isn't it? To hear from us. That's what yeah. they say. So there we go. Uh, yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. That's Is funnel it. still a word? It's funnel's not a word. It's left funnel in Q1. Yeah, it's Q2 Q1. now. Q2 what, what are we now. talking about in Q2? Funnels. Funnels. How we created our funnel. Yeah. Uh, what, what a funnel is, what it yeah, should be. Yeah, I it? hope loads of people are watching, share it and that. Uh, it's not. getting less and less. They've still never shared Stephen it. Stephen Bartlett. They've never shared it. No, oh, they've never shared it. Useless, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, well, we tried. Yeah. We were just uh, thinking about the, the next topic, which is kind of things that coaches might think that they need or that they've heard the term or that mm. they might be sold, you know, they might be being sold that they need these things, and we're going to talk about how we, I guess, scaled our business, and I think more importantly, probably when, um, when we scaled it, what we did, what we've looked into, what's worked, maybe what hasn't worked, and just give you an honest overview of of what we've done. Again, you know, there might be some bits that are right, wrong, whatever, but it, it's just what we've done. It doesn't mean that things can't be done another way. Um, but we'll probably give you compelling um, evidence or opinions um, that it can be. Um, it doesn't have to be done the way that maybe some people are telling you that it needs to be done. There you go. So, what did we do first, Dan? Uh, we got full one-to-one clients. There you go. Number done. One. That is first thing to do. Yeah. Um, which sounds simple, doesn't it? Saying it like that, but yeah. Essentially, that's going to revolve around you posting regular content on your grid, on your stories. And send out regular emails. Which, by the way, might take you two years as well. Yeah. Might, might yeah. take you two years to get full. It, it might not. It might take you six months. I you also need to define what full is for you as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Full is, is different for, for other people, I guess, for, for different people. But mm-hmm. get, getting full is the, the first thing, for sure. Like, that's... that's Before you need to talk about scale or any CEO bullshit or... Um, what do other people? What do other people do? Like, there's just a lot of fucking rubbish. It's the whole Q4 joke again, and being a CEO mm. of my nan's house, you know, um, yeah, type thing. People will sell you that to make you feel like a businessman, um, and then you don't feel like a businessman when you're seven months in in debt because you can't afford to keep up the well, payments. Cause well, you're no but, well, because uh, just on that though is. The most businessmen don't need to post Instagram every day on their stories and on their posts because they have a bigger business and a, a business that runs it a different different way. Like I think, I think online coaching, like again, the whole Q four thing is just like it's just irrelevant. It's just irrelevant to the type of business that you're creating. And again, it just shows that people don't maybe understand the businesses that they're trying to help people create by talking that way. Because again, CEOs of big businesses don't need to be on Instagram stories every day. You do. Mm-hmm. You need to be Instagram stories every day. You need to post Instagram every day. You need to come up with content. Do you think a CEO of a big business sits on Canva? No, they fucking don't. <laughs> Can you imagine them? So, sorry, got to get Canva post out by 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah. Got to schedule it. Yeah. They're not, do you know? Like, and they're the ones that need to worry about Q3, Q4. Not John, who lives with fucking, yeah, his mum. Yeah, but. Getting 10 clients. Come on, there's loads of Q4 events going on. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. But um, in terms so of funnels, four. like, in terms of that, so basically, look, you know, the way we. I'd like say get full with, with clients was free guides, free PDFs, free things that you would get people onto your email list. And again, you would just then bombard them with your authentic content, literally. That, I mean, it's, I know I make it sound so simple saying that, but that is literally what you need to do. doesn't matter if it's carousels, reels, videos, doesn't matter. doesn't matter what it is. Be you, be consistent with it. Video tends to be better because you can get your personality across better. But, you know, do whatever you want. Like, it's the same as getting leaner. There's, a, yeah. there's only one way of doing it. And it's being a calorie deficit. Whereas what people, I'm going to make an analogy, is people or coaches are worrying about things that would be the equivalent of worrying about the GI of the carbs that they're eating. Mm-hmm. That That's it. Like, yeah, it might be more favorable to, to eat lower GI for the most for the most part. Would be the equivalent of, yeah, it might be more favorable to post more reels at the moment because Instagram is pushing reels. But it's about that level. That's the yeah, that is the level. But yeah. that's about the level of it. Um so it it literally is those things. So do the basics to get full. So it is post daily content, be authentic on your stories, 
provide calls to actions and stop being so fucking scared of telling people you got spaces. Yeah. Show your social <clears throat> proof, progress photos, finish transformation photos, what clients say about you, both on your feed and on your stories and video testimonials. Show social proof, show that you do a good job. Yeah. Do it consistently over time. Give out free lead magnets. Ooh, what lead magnet should I do? Oh my God, if I hear that question again, what lead magnet should you do for your demographic, for your future clients? If you can't think of one thing that they would want, we are in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we are in deep trouble. <laughs> yeah, in it. <laughs> like, we've got seven. Yeah. We, could, we could make more. In we, fact, I, we could make seven tomorrow. In fact, if you want our um, client and lead tracker, um, messages... Comment below. What? Comment below. Comment below. Q4. Oh, fucking yeah. Comment below. Q4. <laughs> if you don't have our client and lead tracker, I'll give you our tri- client and lead tracker. Guess what it is? It's a lead magnet. So you're going to get onto our email list. We also get the client and lead tracker, which works out your client retention, works out your monthly revenue, and um, works out your percentage success rate on your on your sales calls. All done for you. You know, carried out by. Yeah, um, for once, novel. actually. For once, yeah. That's a novel. So yeah, literally getting full is that. And then full means at the point where you think that you are coaching the most effectively before you feel like your service would be too watered down and you're pushing to a point that you wouldn't want to get to. And again, that that's different. Some people it might be 30, some people it might be 50, some people it might be 80. Doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Full is full for you. And also, once you are full, don't do this whole bullshit thing of being like exclusive and like pretending that you have like intakes of like things and stuff like that. Like, just keep doing I'm closed CTAs. for um, October. Yeah, it's uh, October the thirty first today, yeah. so November intake opens tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell! The same people that talk about Q four and Q three and all that sort of stuff also same saying that you should be exclusive. Not if you've got five clients, you're not exclusive, so don't be. Um, I saw an interesting thing actually on on Instagram today from a, from a, a marketing guy. And he said that nothing draws a crowd like a crowd. Yeah. It made me laugh because I'm like, there's people out there telling you to be exclusive. And like, but actually what makes you more popular is that if you're more popular, yeah. like that's what makes you more popular. Yeah. So actually you should be talking about how you have more clients and how you have more inquiries and more consultations because more people will want, will want in. Mm-hmm. So it blows in the face of that, doesn't it? So it get, it's like you can find an argument for either thing, right? Like, and it's just the like- th- The thing is, is that it, it's like, you don't ha- like people are worried about being too salesy. You don't have to do it in salesy ways. And I used an example I did uh, last week. Somebody asked a question in one of my question boxes about what app that we use to deliver our coaching. And I said, we don't use apps because nothing really did everything that our sheets do. Um, So you could either, um, A, you know, look on Google to create your own sheets, or you could have our used ones. If you want uh, our pre-done white-labeled ones, drop me a message. Like, that's a call to action as well. And people drop me a message. Like, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, you think outside the box about giving them something that they need. And it doesn't have to be, I'm looking for five busy professionals. Busy professionals, you want to, you want to, you want to lose 10 kilos and scour at the confidence, eating the foods they love. That's what you think a CTA is. It doesn't have to be that. It can be done subtly as well. We drop CTAs all the fucking time, but you probably don't notice them but you'll notice them when you're ready to take what we've got. Comment below Q4 if you've noticed any of the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so there you go. So that you, you get full by doing those things and you do it over time. You don't need to fuck off and do a member site. You don't need to do anything yet. You don't need to fucking worry about scale or anything. Get yourself full um, mm. first. Then what did we do? Group coaching. We did. Group After that, coaching. we did Blitz because we, again, didn't have the amount of time it took us to kind of run a group coaching program was probably about the same amount of time it would have taken us to have maybe another eight clients each or something like that. And again, financially, you're like, okay, the eight clients, you're limited then, so you can't do anything else. You've just got those eight clients. Or would you do 80 on a group coaching in the same amount of time? And then you can scale from there and you have something that is more scalable because you're not as limited by time um, with that. So we did that and we brought on another coach. Just after we did our first blitz, didn't we? We did our first one, and then we brought another coach after that. Yeah, so we yeah basically just created another offering that was a slightly watered down version, and the price reflected that, um, which was like Dan said, more scalable, leveraged a bit more time, was slightly higher in volume, 
again, the benefit of that is that if you're getting a larger volume of people on it, you're going to get more transformations. You're going to get more referrals. And by nature, you're then going to get some people who want to stay on and after. Unfortunately, the group coaching program, you can't lie about how long it took. So yeah, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, in it. <laughs> Go this happened um, in four weeks. Yeah. But it's an eight-week program. Fucking bad. Bad. Yeah. Um, and and it, act, it acts, therefore, as our funnel. So our lower-cost product, Blitz, Fat Loss pro Program, acts as the volume element of uh, the clients that come into the, to the business and the ones that, that come on after. So we would say that around 60 to 70% finish it, roughly, which is not a bad rate. And then half of those probably go into one-to-one -one coaching after. So it serves as a really nice filter, filter and funnel because what you're doing is you're also getting them eight weeks of results so they're already in tune with what you're doing. Like they know how to track the food. They like you. They're probably a good client because they're wanting to go into one-to-one -one and they're wanting to do better things. And at the time where they need an elevated level of um, accountability, at the eight weeks point or wh wherever that is, they then go into one-to-one. -one. So that's how our f funnel works on kind of a mini scale. And then you can kind of like, so how we fill that group coaching up is via email marketing, basically. Email marketing and social media marketing. And we're looking into some influencer stuff as well, which we'll probably maybe talk about that later down the line. Mm -hmm. um, so then you go, okay, so the big piece of the pie is our social media and the email list is the, the, the where all our followers are. And the funnel is push them into a group coaching program and then onto one-to-one. -one. And that's literally it. That is it, yeah. And I think if you start doing a group coaching program too early, the pitfalls of that is that all your leads will go to that um, first rather than going to one-to-one. -to -one. Uh, so you need to do that. But also you need to have your one-to-one -one service nailed on so that you can then water it down for the group coaching. Whereas, again, we've had people say to us that our group coaching was better than some of the one-to-one -one stuff they've been in before, right? So you sometimes will, will have that and you have to make sure that it's different from the one-to-one -one, so that when the upsell comes along it's an easier it's easier sell for you to go right well this is what you then get with one-to-one -one. so we were very clear in what we, the differences were between them mm -hmm. which probably helped us as well but it's that simple like it's nothing more than that mm -hmm. um the things that all. i wouldn't waste your time is with are uh, i wouldn't push people to a free facebook group right just on that just on that how many free facebook groups are you in and that you actively engage in that you love being a part of that's the answer as to why you shouldn't have one next yeah. <laughs> so that's why um nobody uses them they're dead uh you're already probably zapped of trying to create content and then you've got to think of something to post in a facebook group where nobody's bought in there's no accountability within the group it's dead you'll see groups of 500 600 700 people in there three likes on a post uh -huh. um so stay away from putting time effort into a Facebook group. Use that same time and effort, put them onto an email list. Mm -hmm. Simple. Put them onto an email list, and then all you need to do is email them once, twice a week. That's it. You're not then having to create and generate engagement in a Facebook group. Things get lost. People don't see posts. It's not good. Nobody wants a weekly webinar with you either. Like, I'm going to say that. No one wants a weekly webinar with you. In a group coaching program, they do because they're on a time-restricted, time-limited program, eight weeks, they have modules that they've got to work through and challenges to hit on each week. That's why. Well, if you've got a free Facebook group where people can enter at any point in time, you're going to run out of content really, really quickly to talk about, and no one is going to turn up and, and watch it for free. No one will do it. Like, we've got a hard enough job on having people turn up and watch our stuff back in a paid group. Never mind a free group. Like, yeah, people don't have enough time, apparently. Apparently. Um, so in a free group, they definitely don't have enough time, do they? Exactly. But we don't mind doing that because it's a paid group, obviously. So people can pick and choose and do what they want. But the only reason why you would use a free Facebook group, because I'm assuming you're not doing it from the benefit of your own, of your own heart, you don't want to run that Facebook group. You know that you don't. You're not motivated to run that. The only reason you're doing it is to act as a funnel. Mm -hmm. but it, it's the incorrect way to do it. So don't do that. So what you will be told to do, I'm assuming by some people, is probably maybe run Facebook ads to a free group, potentially. 
Um, in my mind, if you were going to run Facebook ads, you would run it to a lead magnet, which we've done again and again for full transparency. It's not changed the face of the business by any stretch of the imagination. No. Again, we'll always do these things and, and be honest. Same as we had a VA for about a month. Not needed. Pointless. Waste of time. Waste, waste of time. I so, think as well with that email with the, the Facebook ads and stuff, I think we've also, I think we're also smart enough, hopefully. I think we've realized why that maybe hasn't quite worked. I think if we were to do it again, we might tweak something slightly. And I think that may help a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like you said there, it's like getting people from a free Facebook group or running ads to a free Facebook group and all this sort of stuff. For me, it comes back to the same problem is that if you can't get your personality across, you're not authentic and you're not consistent. You've got fucking no chance. Like, and I know the reason people are trying these things is because they're not that on Instagram. They're not consistent. They're not authentic on Instagram. So they're trying something different and that, that's not that because they think oh, in a closed group, there'll be more engagement, there'll be more this, more that. Mm -hmm. And actually the reality is no, the same problem you had with Instagram is the same reason that will fail. They think that, oh, it's going to be, it's going to get like a community together, that yeah, are, no. like my fan base type yeah. vibe. Yeah. Not um, if you're just posting protein swaps in there, it's not. Yeah. It, that, that's what they feel. And then they feel like what's going to happen, this is what, and again, and correct me if I'm wrong, what you feel is going to happen is as soon as I get a couple of spaces open up, I post it in the group, I'll get, I'll get the spaces filled. And that's what you think that the funnel is, that you posting, I've got some spaces in a free Facebook group is going to fill yeah. your one-to-one -one up. That's incorrect. So it should be, if you are going to use Facebook ads, again, this isn't us saying that you shouldn't use Facebook ads, because like Dan said, we were probably to blame for some, you know, for probably all of it, to be fair. Um, no, just just parts, more part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's not to say you shouldn't use Facebook ads, but use them to, to drive to a lead magnet, to an email list, keep them warm on an email list, and then you can email market to them. Have a lower cost product down the line, when you're full with one-to-one, -one, have a lower cost product that can that can be a, a lower barrier to entry, less risk, higher volume, which in turn will get you more client results, more referrals, and serve as a nice funnel and feeder into your one-to-one. -one. Then you can start to take on coaches, because if in theory you are full with one-to-one, -one, Who's going to coach the people that want to go into one-to-one -one after the group coaching? Not you, because you're full. So you're going to need somebody else to come on. And then that's way that that's where you can use your group coaching to um, train your 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 new coach, or um, you know bring them up to speed with the way that you work, be it the app or the spreadsheet or whatever the accountability that you're using. Um, and then they can then take the upsells from the group coaching because they've had their face seen in the group. They've already done some coaching. The clients already know you. You've already got that trust because you've got eight weeks of results under your belt with that person. And then they will go into one-to-one. -one. And then that's where you, as the business owner, can then almost have like a, a finder's fee, a percentage commission split with that, with that coach. And then that's where you can start to leverage some time back. Mm -hmm. As the business owner, the business owner, not when you've got 20 clients, not then, but in the future, that's when you can then start to leverage some time back. I think the only reason you would have a group coaching program is if, like I said, there was another person in the business. Mm. On your own, I just don't think there's any point. It's no. not why couple, you'd use a that. A couple of my clients are going to do some in January. It's more challenge style. But um, then again, it's also, but it'll be based on what your guidance and what you've given them like again like yeah. with all that sort of stuff right so again it's different in that from that point of view and i also think for different demographics it works yeah. better as well um for example if you're a bodybuilder watching this i don't think a six-week group coaching is going to work Ever. whereas if you coach ex-slimming welders a six-week or an eight-week group coaching is going to work for that demographic because they're historically used to paying a little bit less so paying one-to-one yeah. -one might be daunting they might want to get a feeling of it and the community group will be a good place for them because it's something similar to what they've done before so for you, that might be a good offering so yeah. that you can then upsell them into one-to-one -one and give them what they need. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. So that's, that's our funnel. Funnel. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, that's what we've done. Um, so the right time, actually, to employ a coach, because this happens as well. With, so how would you employ people? What order would you employ people? I think, as we just said, I think the reason why I think you have to almost have another coach on board when you do a group coaching or the reason why you would launch a group coaching model to bring a new coach on board is that if you bring a new coach on and you assume that if you've got a long waiting list or you've got people who want to work with you that you can just palm them off to another coach, 
um, they won't want to go and work with them because they don't know them. They don't know who they are. They don't trust them. Don't have that know, like, and trust element to it. So if you have a group coaching, you've got those, that time period, whether it's five weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, you got that time period for that coach to get to know the people in there and they'll get to know the coach and they'll go, oh yeah, I really liked Mike. He was great, you know, and I want to work with him now rather than you. And you can always give them at the end of that, the option to only work with that person. So again, that is more logical and they're going to then um, build up a client base. So I think that's where if you do bring on another coach and you don't have a group coaching program, you've got to anticipate that they need to get the clients themselves. You can't be, there's, it's unlikely you're going to be able to hand them clients that, that you've worked with or you, you know, We've got a waiting list. Um, so that's why I think if you do hire a coach, you need to do it in that order. Yeah. In our opinion. Or have something, whether it's group coaching or not, but something that puts this coach in front of these people. Yeah. Lead gen is hard enough without having to lead gen for yourself and someone else um, without the group coaching. But yeah, something that puts them in front of someone else is is good. Yeah. Whether you whether you did a, po- a podcast yeah, there's there's ways you can there's loads of ways you can do it. It needs to get, you need to get their um, personality across, and it's again people by people. Yeah, because you could probably do that without running a group coach. And what you could do is I'm really excited to announce new coaches coming on board. Dave, uh, Dan, I'm gonna call you Dave then. Um, it looks like a Dave, doesn't he? Uh, I answer to anything. D- yeah, anything, yeah. anything with a D, dickhead. Um, yeah. Don't. Um, Dan's coming on board, and we're really excited to to do our podcast because at that point. Podcast might be the right thing because we've just established you're full with coaches, so uh, full with full with clients. So it probably shows that you're doing something right on Instagram. We're going to launch a podcast. It's going to be called Biceps and Banter Radio, um, and that's then that's where people can then get to know Dan, and people are going to prefer Dan over over me. Some people, one, one or two, not many. Most of them. Um, most of them probably. Yeah, to be fair. Um, and get his personality across, and then people then don't necessarily just want to work with me if it was in this scenario that I'm bringing him on as a coach, probably it's something similar to that. But. Yeah, and that's it. Like, I don't think it needs to be more complicated than that. I think, I, think that, I think that every online coach is sort of funneled to a certain degree will look different, I think, to a certain degree. Like, again, because it's based on your niche. It's based on who you work with and what they need help with, what they need hand with, how you're going to get that across to them. It's, it's so unique and it's why, again, you see all these courses and people selling all this stuff and I'm like... <laughs> Like how, how can you tell everyone this is the way to do it? And, you know, I just don't think it's, um, it's ethical number one, but number two is you've got to ask yourself again, the same thing. It comes down to, to fat loss stuff. It's the same thing. It's like, it's like the 1200 calorie meal plans being handed out to everyone. Well, it's not going to, it's going to help a small percentage of people. It's not going to help everyone. You, you know that people need different amounts of calories for different amounts of activity, for different amounts of, you know, time frames in a diff- for a different goal. Hunger, satiety, adherence. Yeah. And it's the same with this. It's like, okay, well, what's my perfect funnel? Well, I can't tell you like, until I know more about you. Mm-hmm. And I think that, yeah, some of the funnels may start looking similar on the outside, but on the inside, they still will be slightly different and have different reasons for certain diff- you know, different bits within it. Um, and again, it's coaches looking for the hack and it's looking for the trick or looking for the, mm-hmm. when do you do this? When do you do that? Well, whenever it's right. <laughs> I don't know when it's right until I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, like you would say the same thing to your clients. I've I've really had a real like not epiphany but like last week I've noticed that there's so many things within running a business and helping coaches with this side of stuff that just relates so well to nutrition and training yeah that you can use all their content against them mm-hmm. it's it's exactly the same thing it's the same excuses because coaching in but I think by definition coaching is is almost like holding a mirror up to someone and just going. You know what you need to do to get there, don't you? Mm-hmm. You know, like people know with fat loss, right? They know that they're not consistent enough, that they overeat the weekends, that they don't eat enough fruit and veg, and they don't eat enough protein, and they don't train hard enough. They, they know this. They just need someone each week to turn up and go, stop doing that. <laughs> and it's kind of the same with this, is it's not anything magic. It's you know what you're not doing. Mm-hmm. You know watching this what you're not doing. And you know that if you were to come on board with us, we would tell you to start doing it. That, that that it's as simple as that and I think that as humans we just uh, there's a small subsection of us that don't who we're looking at I think we've got each other but we don't have someone telling us what to do all the time at the moment we have each other to go nah that's not going to work or yeah that is going to work let's try it let's find out mm-hmm. we hold each other accountable mm-hmm. and it's the same with this with, with a funnel and all this sort of stuff is you've got to be ready if you do bring on another coach as well, to manage that person. Like that's one thing we weren't great at when we first started yeah. is that we had to learn the hard way how to manage someone, not in a bad way, in a good, in a good way and bad way. Um, and we're better, a little bit better now and still not great. 
but a little bit better now because we've learned from our mistakes and we learned from that. It's the same with, with fat loss stuff. You learn from your mistakes most of the time. Um, but there's nothing magic out there in any of these funnels, any of these things or hacks or like you said there, oh, watch this lead magnet. <laughs> Fucking hell, do anything. Yeah. Do anything. Yeah. It does literally once you've got their email address, it actually doesn't matter. Like still make it very, very good and still make it usable, obviously. Is but it, is a training plan a good lead magnet? <laughs> I don't know. Would you download it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Is your niche one in a training, training plan? plan? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. And, 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 and the, thing, so the thing with coaches, the, the, it, it comes from fear. It comes from fear. And it doesn't come from not knowing. It comes from fear. And it's the same with, with people with fat loss is that there's so many con so much contradiction advice out there. They see all these methods and the principle remains the same. They need to eat less and move more. It's the same with coaches. They need to think less and do more. Think less and just do more shit. Post more. Be Put yourself out there more. Do more stuff. But so many coaches spend so much time thinking, hypothesizing, planning. Mm. They spend no time doing anything. Mm. So there's no point with us. We didn't plan our funnel. We just did it. We just did it. Yeah. And it became a funnel. <laughs> like we saw it went, right, well, this is logical. This will happen. This will happen. This will happen. Let's do it. And it, and it and if you can say anything away, like comment below. That's the, that's the, that's the thing for, for this video is... Coaches need to think less and do more. Mm. That's, the, that's the, the mantra. Like it should be. It's the same with, with fat loss. It's the same thing. People need to think less and do more. Yeah. Because all, all of that is just nuanced stuff. Like I can't remember whether it's this video. Obviously we filmed quite a few back to back. But I yeah. said about the low GI carb. There's this one, yeah. This one. Yeah. Like all of that is just nuanced bits. Like so yes, we've got group coaching, other coaches, so on and so forth. But... We could cut all that away tomorrow if we wanted to. And still have a really good business because of the things that we've done day in, day out for the last eight years. It's because our Q3 was planned so well. Because the Q3 three was planned, yeah. Um, that's why it is, mate. That, that's it. Like, because we've just done it in our way. Like, that's that's literally it. But unfortunately, and again, to use like Dan's analogy of the nutrition stuff, is coaches do the equivalent of, I'll try this brand of fat burners. I'll try this diet now. I'll try this meal plan. I'll try this. Now I'm on that. Have you tried this? And it's looking for something. And the thing that you would tell any consultation or any client is that you're missing the basics. Like mm -hmm. you, this is what you would say. You're missing the basics. You've been looking for the magic bullet and there isn't one. All you need to do is X, Y, and Z and I'll hold you accountable to it. <clears throat> guess, take, what we, guess what we sell our course. Yeah. <laughs> take your own advice. <laughs> it's that. Stop looking for the fat burner supplements, the equivalent of stop looking for the magic thing. There isn't one. Whether some whether someone's Instagram is telling you or Facebook ads are telling you that there's something that you're missing, that they can guarantee X, Y, and Z, they can't. There is no way that they can guarantee anything. I promise you now, the thing that you need is consistency over time. Like, literally, that's it. Stay in the game. There you go. I think we, yeah, that's probably the same ending to all our videos. I think we just started ranting. Towards They're all the that, same video at the moment. <laughs> you know? Anyway, we'll leave it there. Don't forget to subscribe. Always hit subscribe for us. There's a week between them, so they'll forget. They'll forget. Yeah, yeah. we, have to, we, we do could. have to keep saying the same thing I over and over. I think we could put out the same video every week with a different title on it, and no one would notice. Probably not. There's not that many people watching it, to be fair. So no, yeah, that'd be why because they're not sharing it. They're not sharing it with their friends. They're not posting. You know, posting it. Share it. Yeah, have a good one.